welcome everyone um, to the first introduction lecture on uh, the subject of uh, a data science course. Uh, we'll be uh, doing uh, during this term, and as uh, mentioned uh, previously, um, if you have attended uh, any of our course, we highly emphasize students to pay attention to the words they read and if they can't understand if, if they don't understand and and can't extract the core meaning behind it it's a very important uh, to consult or to visit um, in today's modern world very easy uh, uh, sources like Oxford dictionary or Wikipedia or just google it um, in order to find the meanings of those words. So in this particular uh, slide what you are seeing, uh, you know, the, uh, there are two important, uh, very important uh, words relating to the title of this course. One is data and the other is science. Uh, we will learn about it, um, uh, what uh, these two words mean because uh, it's a the, both of these words or combination of these words are a pretty big hype in uh, in today's uh, uh, world. Uh, basically, in every field, data science is playing a significant impact in bringing um, uh, or extracting information in relation to serving humanity. Okay. So let's uh, move to the next slide. So uh, we, we, we serve these courses under Contact Field Institute. Um, anyone interested in following us, uh, here's the LinkedIn um, profile page uh, you can visit and follow. Um, if you want to contact us uh, through email, here are the emails, info at hsclouds.org or softcollecti.hsclouds uh, at gmail.com HS stands for Humanity Serving Clouds and that's exactly what you see here Humanity Serving Clouds um, as an organization as technical individuals and team we firmly believe in this very important uh, sentence that, that there is no shortcut to glory whatever you want to do in any field you have to learn it, practice it, and really get good at it in order to get recognized in that particular area of interest. So, um, like in this particular course, we'll be doing, uh, uh, we will be studying data science. So, and uh, we will try to emphasize the importance of does uh, data science, the fundamental core concept for you to learn. Uh, in order to get a strong footing on that particular subject area. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So again, what is data science? Uh, as uh, mentioned right in the beginning, uh, we mentioned that you know just the heavy emphasis on the words. If you, if you, if you, if you don't understand it exactly what it means, since the title of this course is data science, so we need to understand what is data. So in simple words, what we know is uh, that data is basically means information, that you have some, some sort of an information. And science in its simplest meaning is, is, is uh, means that extracting knowledge uh, from your observations, uh, from your experiments, uh, or in this particular uh, case from data so the information you extract the knowledge you extract from the given information uh, in the form of data um, most of the time to serve humanity is what these two words mean as data science okay so maybe you think that it's simple but let's try to get into uh, to 
really understanding and discern the meaning of this particular two words okay so as science has uh, told us that um, whatever is there in the universe in the known universe whatever is there in the known universe is because of an incident we call it as Big Bang so there was an incident happening um, almost 13.8 billion years ago after which you know different processes happens uh, because of which uh, you know we have uh, uh, different constellations galaxies planets and eventually a planet like earth where we can have biological organisms so what's the reason behind showing all this um, information in relation to data science because every aspect of all the processes happened since that Big Bang or even <laughs> the scientists the physics they talk about what was before Big Bang that is that is all data so so it means what I'm trying to um, emphasize that data is basically everywhere in the universe. Okay, it's depending on your interest that what subject or area of expertise you want to focus on in order to extract the required knowledge and information to serve humanity or to bring bring uh, something constructive in that particular area of interest. So. Um, so that Big Bang happened uh, approximately, that sign is for approximate, so approximately 30.8 billion years ago and the formi formation of Earth, uh, our beautiful Earth, happened approximately 4.6 billion years ago, okay? So hopefully that really brings you a clarity on the importance, the significance of uh, talking on this particular word, we call it as data science, or two words, or a sentence, that what is data science. So let's uh, carry on to the next slide, okay? So th this slide shows, you know, the time after the Big Bang, you know, uh, shape of the universe, or different we are not going to study um, astronomy or physics in this in this particular course but I'm just trying to show you that since Big Bang so many so many um, uh, processes or phases occurred in the formation of the universe and uh, uh, years before the present so all that information that you see on on uh, pictures or uh, sheets like this is all is, is basically all data that's what I'm trying to emphasize it and even even the physicist or the astronomist can predict um, uh, that how the future years in the future will um, will transform like okay so this is again uh, showing the importance of data science and uh, depending on what area of uh, interest you are working on. So let's go to the next slide. So here in this slide, uh, at night time with clear sky, and if you're standing just like this, but when you see up in the sky, you see stars, right? So this is what an ordinary individual will will say. That what you see if you ask him or heard the question what you see up in the uh, up in uh, the sky and he or she will say that okay I see stars but when you ask the same question to a scientist he is going to look into 
it's, uh, he's going to extract from that information data, which we call it as stars, uh, you know, formations like this. Okay, so he he or she is extracting as a scientist uh, some very unique information from that data. So these are different uh, constellations or uh, how to find the north star, or there are other you know kind of uh, uh, formations of stars. Uh, to extract, uh, reliably extract or know uh, the information of interest. But again, as I mentioned before, we are not studying uh, astronomy or uh, knowledge about stars, but just showing the importance of uh, scientists using uh, data presented to them in extracting very useful information. Uh, similarly, um, if you have a decent uh, telescope, you can uh, you can see uh, five planets from our Earth. This information is taken from the NASA website. If you click on the plan planets link, you okay wherever because these slides will be shared with you. Uh, the hand symbol means that uh, there is a link. Uh, for from where, where the information is uh, taken, you just click on that link and it will take you to that particular information source. Okay, so there are five planets you can see from Earth: Mercury, Venus, uh, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Provided that if you have a not very expensive but a conventionally kind of a low-cost telescope in your um, uh, with you in order to see or uh, those planets uh, from Earth. Again, an, uh, an example of uh, data science. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So in this slide, what you see is uh, basically citations network among different academic disciplines so so in simple words that how different academic disciplines are mentioning other academic disciplines in their publications writings uh, so that is basically if you if you if you tr if you see this picture it's enormously connected very complex connections again then then what you can extract out of it is basically uh, what you see is data and what you can extract out of it um, for for useful purposes is basically a sign behind it so uh, another thing what what this picture shows that the data science is uh, is basically embedded into almost all the disciplines, academic disciplines, and that's what the importance of data science is. Since uh, maybe a question comes in your mind that, okay, then it means uh, I have to uh, understand all those academic disciplines, the answer to that is no. Uh, based on the experiences and uh, uh, historical information, what um, uh, what is kind of extracted or kind of uh, well established information that having a decent knowledge on first uh, mathematics or the rules of mathematics uh, mathematical language and physics because physics is what describes our universe it really helps you become a good data scientist okay so again emphasizing uh, that math and physics are one of the core uh, kind of uh, requirements in order to you be successful in the field of data science along with others which we will discuss in the following slides Okay, so here's the next slide. So the question is, 
uh, what you see on this slide and I'll give you five seconds to think your answer okay so uh, so what is your answer just keep it in your head I'm just going to, going to guess that uh, some will might say that okay I don't see anything there is nothing on the slide and some will say okay I only see a white box there is nothing out there okay but if you ask a very uh, kind of intrigued research oriented uh, mind he might will say this that he or she is seeing a white color okay so what is the significance of white color why it's white these are some of the questions he or she is going to ask in uh, to herself or himself so why the color is white and historically if you uh, if, if, if we go back into the history of uh, sciences, especially the physics, that's exactly what the, sci uh, the, um, the physicists or the scientists were asking themselves. Uh, uh, because they were seeing uh, in sky, in horizon, horizon uh, rainbows, and they were interested in finding why, uh, what makes rainbow. Uh, without going into the <laughs> lot more detail uh, the experiments eventually showed the prism experiments um, uh, done by Newton and other scientists um, it, it shows that the white light is basically composed of visible colors uh, but that that's not what all uh, kind of where, where, where scientists saw further experimentation showed that it's composed of not only visible light but it's also the white light has infrared and ultraviolet uh, which, are, which are not visible portion of uh, energy okay so what I'm trying to say that we just saw a one big white box and now these all these uh, uh, extraction of information based on successful experimentation resulted in presenting us the information which was immensely powerful okay? and that's what science is and you may see uh, up and down on this slide uh, black color and you, you might think that black color is basically no information but here's the surprise our universe as we know as, as, as the scientists know as of now only 4.9 percent is ordinary matter what means by ordinary matters like the galaxies the planets whatever is visible is 4.9 percent the rest 94 point uh, sorry 95.1 percent is dark is darkness in simple words it's all darkness all this the rest of the pie is darkness again the top and the bottom of the slide that's how the universe look like and out of that darkness scientists has divided 68.3 percent they call it as dark energy and 26.8 percent as dark matter we are not going to st study <laughs> the what is dark matter or dark energy uh, but again trying to emphasize that we just saw an information a white box and from that white box uh, as a data we extracted you know that 
visible spectrum, infrared, ultraviolet uh, radiations within that white light or white color and the, there were black areas on top and bottom and what we learned is again that is kind of an information and from that information what we know that in the universe you know that majority 95.1 percent of the universe is basically composed of darkness which, which is divided into dark energy and dark matter so that is very important as a data as scientist to see the data very critically and be able to extract uh, or experiment with that data in bringing information for the uh, information benefiting humanity and that's what the role of a data scientist is okay let's go to the next slide okay so that's that's a what our universe is very you know I really like this picture you know uh, standing up on a small hill seeing up in the sky our universe so what is our universe that's one of the uh, another very simple question so in simple words our universe is analog governed by the beauty of math and physics so it means just to show you how important it is to have decent knowledge on mathematics and physics in order to be uh, what I'll say that uh, to perform good primarily in any discipline or, or the majority of the dis uh, academic disciplines or industrial um, uh, kind of assignments um, uh, but but as we know that uh, most of the time nowadays uh, we deal with digital information so it's another very important question is that how we bring our world which is primarily analog into the digital world so let's go to the next slide so we will answer that uh, previously asked question about bringing the information uh, to the digital world into one of the one of the slides, but but here's another slide. So what do we see there? Uh, I'm pretty sure that this time you have a different answer. But without going into the complexity in this particular course, we will be only dealing with text and images. Okay, and the text uh, can be numbers, letters, sentences and images you know like images uh, but it, but in digital world um, for your information uh, it, if you're talking text or we're talking images basically we're talking numbers uh, again without going into the complexity of that we are just going to deal with text and images so let's go to the next slide okay so here are the course objectives uh, uh, acquire uh, a data science related knowledge and skill set and the most important one is that how data scientists can truly help humanity with his uh, acquired abilities so in this extra items I think before uh, st going into the technical details of this course is very important to see what people have done um, uh, as, a, as of now using the data science skill set so th these are some of the uh, links you just click on the uh, click on the links and it will take you to the, to the um, a respective video and I highly recommend you and also in this video I'm going to show you all those six videos in order for you to basically grasp the importance of the word data science and what people are doing with it okay
the central idea of the Vision Zero campaign is that we shouldn't accept that 40,000 people die every year as part of just how our transportation system works. About a year and a half ago, we were approached by Microsoft about how we could partner together with Datakind to get better at using the data that we do collect to really start looking at exposure rates and identifying where people were exposed to risky conditions. We're an organization that teams up data scientists, machine learning experts, and others from the tech sector who want to volunteer alongside social organizations so that together they can help us live in a better world. Data science and algorithms can only work when they're actually designed in collaboration with folks so that they'll actually live on beyond the end of the project. Our first labs project was this Vision Zero project in partnership with Microsoft. Our goal here was to partner with um, a variety of cities, so we partnered with Seattle, New Orleans, and New York, and then worked on different traffic safety studies for each of those cities. Datakind provides data scientists for us that can actually spend the time building the algorithms that help us predict where we need to make safety improvements. Within the Department of Transportation, we just didn't have these resources. The sort of pie in the sky, holy grail piece that we were looking to get to here, you want the capability to be able to sit down, look at a roadway, and say, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this change to the street. I'm going to expand the sidewalk by five feet, put a bike lane on the left side of the street, put a concrete median through the middle of the roadway. I'm gonna enter all those things in. I'm, what I'm gonna get back is, what is going to be the effect of that set of treatments on safety, on injury rates, on fatality rates? One of the most groundbreaking pieces of this work was the exposure model, which basically helps you know how many cars are on the road block by block across the city. This algorithm that's actually able to determine what those levels are of congestion is a really critical underpinning to every other piece of Vision Zero prediction work you'd want to do. This is something uh, I think that the general public probably thinks that uh, city agencies like DOT already know. Uh, we don't know that and typically cities in general don't know that either. But we do have uh, a lot of data that we've collected uh, over the years, but it only covers about 5% uh, of the city. So Datakind was able to take that data, extrapolate out from it, and basically generate an estimate for how many vehicles are using a piece of roadway uh, during the day or at uh, peak hour, which is something we look at when we're planning a project. Using this data with exposure rates really helps us start targeting different policies or different projects that we know are going to yield results and ideally prevent future crashes. What we're trying to do is keep people out of the hospital and save people's lives. And the more we know, the better a job we can do. The city of New York is already starting to put some of this into practice. The Seattle Department of Transportation, which now has a $1 billion budget to work on traffic improvements, is going to be using the findings coming out of this work to actually help improve their calming activities. We're excited about this model and how it brings together technology companies and governments and communities. And we think this model can be scalable around the world. That's really what I think we're going to see more of as we move forward. More of these collaborations and partnerships that will actually allow us to use data science for good. Data science basically is just the set of methodologies and techniques that are used to extract knowledge from data. So how do we get from a big pile of raw data to something that's actually meaningful. Part of making data available to so many different audiences is really building that scaffolding, that infrastructure uh, for people to find data and then ultimately make use of it. NLM has been involved in data before data science was even really a term. We have the National Center for Biotechnology Information, which is a really incredible data resource for people that are working with um, biomedical data of all different types. And we have a lot of other resources that we make available like PubMed to provide access to the literature. So really we have been involved in making information and data available to people for a long time.
we're in this moment where we have genomics technologies and we have wearables that are collecting information from us. We have computerized clinical records and all of these different data sources that if we could combine them and figure out, you know, what are the best forms of analysis, we can really accelerate the speed of biomedical discovery. And we have the kind of expertise at NLM that allows us to not only make data available, but do research that really advances data science, particularly in the areas of things like natural language processing, which involves using data science techniques to extract information from text. When we think of a library, we sort of think of books on a shelf and librarians as people handing books to us. But really, NLM has this long track record of making data available to different users in all of these different types of ways. Like any library, we exist to make information available to people. And now we're doing that in a way that fits with the modern techniques and technologies that we have available to us through data science approaches. Did you know that 1.7 megabytes of data is generated every second for every person in the world? This enormous volume of data is known as big data. We all experience the aftermath of data science in our daily lives. But how is data science useful in the context of your specific industry? How has data science been employed across various industries? To help you answer these questions, here are some quintessential examples. Entertainment and Netflix. Have you ever wondered how Netflix always seems to know what your next favorite TV show is before you do? With over 238 million subscribers worldwide, Netflix has access to a lot of data. Netflix uses this data to create detailed profiles of each of its subscribers and then provides a customized viewing experience. Logistics and UPS. UPS relies on data science to optimize package transport from drop-off to delivery. It uses an integrated navigation system, Orion, to help drivers choose over 66,000 fuel-efficient routes. Orion has saved UPS around 100 million miles and 10 million gallons of fuel per year. DoorDash and Marketing. DoorDash is an American food delivery service company that uses data science to reach and attract new customers. Data science allows DoorDash to ensure that they do not overspend on unprofitable campaigns. This is achieved through optimizing campaigns in line with historical performance. Healthcare and Babylon. Babylon is a startup British digital health service provider that uses data science to create personalized health experiences. The company relies on machine learning to run clinical validations that could be completed within 20 minutes rather than the 10 hours that they used to require. Binance and TLIM. TLIM Assurances is a French insurance company that uses AI and data science to reduce fraudulent insurance claims. With the help of IBM Consulting, they created an algorithm that could be deployed to detect fraud. Now the company detects five times more fraudulent claims than it previously did. Fitness and Whoop. To ensure athletes are taking the necessary steps to get the most out of their body, Whoop designs wearable devices that track athletes' physical data, such as respiratory rate. Top athletes like Olympic sprinter Gabby Thomas and Olympic golfer Nelly Korda are among the Whoop's users. Healthcare and Clue. The Clue app employs data science and analytics to forecast users' menstrual cycles and reproductive health by tracking cycle start dates, moods, hair condition, and many other metrics. Start using data science at your organization. When critical thinking meets machine learning algorithms, data science can offer insights and informed predictions. So what are you waiting for? Start developing your organization's data science capabilities today. Talk to the data science experts at VLINK. Modern physics is a very broad discipline which is not just confined to traditional fields such as quantum physics, astrophysics, and space science. Where new quantum computers, telescopes, and technologies are providing advances, which will enhance our futures. It is also applied to seeing cancer better and earlier, and to design more effective treatments, to the modeling of biological and chemical systems, as well as the environment and many other data sources. All of these disciplines generate huge, huge amounts of data, 
and it's this issue which data science is grappling with. Data science has been developed to handle the very large data streams that are generated by our everyday lives. It's a very new discipline, and there is some disagreement on its definition, though the one which Wikipedia provides emphasises that it is a multidisciplinary field which harnesses the power of statistics and machine learning to analyse patterns in large data sets and obtain coherent messages from them. It therefore requires skills in computing and statistics, but also in areas such as data visualisation and communication, all of which are taught in this course. In our specific case, we are interested in physics problems, so we need to develop the de discipline-specific skills in physics and use data science to analyse large physical data sets, to create information from that data and ultimately then understand the process that gave rise to the data through some modelling. Examples include analysing the light curves of extrasolar planets, gravitational waves from black hole collisions and other data sources. And the same set of principles we teach our students would be applicable to a wide range of other sciences, including biology and chemistry. Ultimately, we are developing skills which science and industry require, although they may be applying those skills to areas other than physics. An example of how data science is applied to physics experiments is the Event Horizon Telescope, where eight individual radio telescopes around the world were combined to create an Earth-sized telescope capable of imaging the event horizon of the black hole at the centre of M87. M87 is a galaxy in the constellation Virgo, and the team of scientists conducted an observation run on M87 with their combined telescopes over a period of four days generating data that was stored on over 1,000 hard drives, which were shipped by air to Haystrack Observatory in MIT and Bonn in Germany. Here the data was processed and a single algorithm or mathematical equation was applied to the data using 600 computer processors containing a total of six petabytes of RAM to generate this image of the event horizon of the black hole. For comparison, 6 petabytes of data corresponds to all of the data contained in approximately 100,000 smartphones. We are lucky in Ireland to have seven of the top data science multinationals and there is acute demand for talent in this space. Last year, the workforce in data science in Ireland was predicted to reach 60,000 and is still growing fast, with graduates in physics particularly in demand for their problem-solving skills. Our course seeks to address this gap and does so by giving students discipline specific skills in physics together with those in mathematics, statistics and computing. Years 1 and 2 of the course give students an in-depth preparation in these areas which are then further expanded in year 3 before the students enter a 7-month industrial placement programme where they spend time working in a relevant industry. A feature of our courses which we often find leads to employment upon graduation. Then in year four, we provide further training in physics, computing and data science before students undertake a research project of relevance to their program. In terms of employment prospects for students of this course, they are excellent. Where starting salaries for physicists have been shown by the Institute of Physics to be in excess of 38,000 euros. Additionally, physics-based industries contribute hugely to the Irish economy through employing in excess of 160,000 people or almost a tenth of the Irish workforce, and contributing 37 billion to the exports from the country. Overall, this course provides an excellent springboard for your career, giving options in both traditional physics and in the newer data science industries. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and hope to welcome you to our new campus soon. Until then, stay safe and well. I am Adam Russman. I am the future of healthcare. Currently, I'm a manager at MYP uh, in the data analytics group there. So my job and responsibility is to get people access to their data and, and help them understand the challenges that they're facing in the organization. 
there's a the trend towards virtualization, the trend towards a higher reliance on technology and dependence on technology, that I have a career setup that's, that's attributed itself to that. And I'm trying to remain connected to that space. Um, in particular, you know, the, the move towards artificial intelligence, the move towards understanding and trusting data at a, at a deeper level within healthcare is something that, that I really want to stay connected to. And this program is helping me understand the, the very core and fundamental challenges that exist in doing that, including connecting to a, a wide variety of stakeholders that exist in the healthcare space that need to understand the common challenges that you face when you move to a more digital and virtual care model. The cohort's great. It, it was really established well. There's a great balance between physicians and, and non-physicians and other types of clinicians, as well as people like myself who have no traditional clinical background other than we work in and around physicians and clinicians. Um, so some of my closest friends in this, in this program have become the clinicians, and, and it's really helped me sort of develop both a, a personal appreciation for different professions as well as an understanding of how they operate, think, and, and drive at a, at a much deeper level than I ever could have imagined just working with individuals. This program is unique in its perspective that it brings to both a business and a healthcare uh, arena. There's, there's very few programs that exist, if any, that combine both a, a master's in a, in a very healthcare specific domain with a very traditional MBA curriculum. Um, so I, I thought that the combination of the two was really strong and a really great benefit, um, both for my sort of paper career as well as my, my actual career. Um, I think the students and the network that gets developed and identified by having that combination and, and the types of students that get attracted to a program where you, you have such intensity and, and such focus is really what I wanted to see and do um, for my career. How do you change the way you study an organism from looking at individual images under a microscope to having the entire instruction set for that organism written in a language you do not know? Uh, and so that was the birth of this amazing problem that joined statistical methods with you know, multiple centuries of domain expertise in biology. So you have a natural science, you have abundant data, you have no models as to how to put those data together with that domain expertise. And that challenge we would now call data science. Health is a field where there are abundant data and there are constantly changes in health that allow us to quantify ourselves or our patients at far, far bigger scale. So health is a field where large data sets plus health is going to be transformative and I'm very interested in how we can take tools of machine learning and predictive modeling from machine learning and apply them to large and extremely messy uh, health records. Right? And one of the interesting things about Columbia is we have a great medical school and it's a medical school with a department that's very forward thinking about how data might be used to solve real health problems. Within Columbia University, one goal is to really strengthen the link between the engineering school and the medical school. With our uh, collaboration and our partnership with New York Presbyterian Hospital, we are in a unique position because we have access to more than 20 years worth of data about patient records. And so it's kind of for us like a living laboratory and we can look at it both historically and cumulatively. We can try to understand what are the trends of healthcare, we can build tools for our clinicians as part of the hospital. Just see what the nephrology does. No, 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 she, she doesn't have myeloma, I can tell you she has MGUS. And we can learn about health in general by looking at trends of patients that stayed in our institution for these 20 years. You know, what does it mean to have diabetes in very concrete terms from a data standpoint? This is what, one, two, three, four, five, six? Yeah, yeah so I bet that there's a intramolecular right? hydrogen bond. We're using big data approaches to identify new drug targets. 
and right. therapeutic that might be useful for particular patient groups, a kind of personalized medicine approach. So we're designing brand new molecules using computational tools, millions of compounds, and testing them for their ability to interact with these otherwise intractable proteins. We're designing molecules and synthesizing them using chemistry, and then we're testing them in biology, and we're intersecting also with medicine, with patient samples, and using an engineering approach to understand the networks in these cells. Many of the research projects that I've worked on in the last decade have been about trying to take a, uh, a developed field, or sometimes a field in which people were asking new questions, and seeing how that question can be reframed as a machine learning task. So biological networks, social networks, how do we bring machine learning to bear to try to understand these natural data? So from the cellular to genomic to individual patient to entire populations, there's so much left to learn in medicine. And I think together between data and medical sciences, we, we have a lot to work with. Uh, so as you have seen in all six videos, uh, the different organizations, uh, academic institutes, industries, how they are um, collaboratively uh, uh, using data to extract the required knowledge uh, for the betterment in their areas of interests. So that was the core purpose um, of sharing all those videos. So let's uh, talk about it because uh, uh, here we are going to focus on data science but uh, uh, there are multiple uh, uh, I'll say job titles which are uh, very uh, common in relating in relation to um, uh, data sciences. Uh, one is data engineer, uh, the other is a data analyst and uh, several others. Uh, I'll say job titles. Uh, this is a so I'm going to show a few um, slides uh, uh, in relation to these uh, kind of uh, uh, job titles. Uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence is also uh, going to be covered in the subsequent uh, slides. And the idea behind uh, showing you uh, these slides is that uh, that all these disciplines or job titles have overlapping job responsibilities as you can see in this particular slide if you know what is a Venn diagram so it's been shown as uh, as a one Venn diagram with overlapping as you can see uh, areas uh, in these three circles so a data scientist you know uh, you know having not only uh, knowledge, uh, good knowledge on math, statistic, uh, software, algorithms mean uh, software engineering, but also kind of handling data. So, so the reason of again showing you all those uh, uh, few slides is that uh, uh, the core focus of a of a data scientist is to is to use uh, the given data apply uh, the required knowledge and skill set uh, of uh, math uh, or different discipline of sciences uh, and, uh, and, and implementing or using uh, the algorithm or software engineering libraries to uh, extract the required knowledge from that given data science. Uh, data set. So let's go to the next slide and again um, since uh, because of the popularity uh, of uh, data, data scientists in almost all disciplines uh, there are uh, institutes who, who offer degree uh, uh, level programs 
uh, on data science uh, on data science as well so then this is a very good graph which i found which compares um, you know that how many uh, the percentile of uh, does data science degree holders versus uh, the ai like AI artificial intelligence uh, degree holders and as you can see in this particular graph you know in the masters at the, the masters level there are does data scientists are much more compared to the AI professionals and similar to the bachelor's level you know uh, data scientists leads uh, compared to the students uh, getting into the AI profession but as you see again into the subsequent flights that both of these uh, professions have uh, if you are an AI professional you cannot uh, say that you have nothing to do with the with data science or data analysis or data engineering they are basically overlapping, uh, overlapping roles and responsibilities again a very good uh, kind of a picture showing uh, the overlapping role uh, of a data data science and machine learning and so let's uh, just simply read uh, this particular uh, com uh, common area uh, as you can see it says machine learning is part of data science its algorithm trained on data delivered by data science to learn and the skills need is as told before math statistics has nothing more than a, you know a subset of mathematics uh, same as probability just emphasizing um, that within mathematics the importance of using statistics and probability for data science applications uh, comfortable working with data and programming skills so it's you know a very good diagram showing you uh, the overla uh, overlapping roles of a data science uh, scientist or a machine learning expert or AI professional again um, another uh, I find this is a good picture so uh, that's between data scientists and the data analy uh, analytics uh, skill set and let's talk about the common uh, set uh, basic statistical analysis programming languages uh, Java is not that popular when we talk about being a data scientist or a data analyst the uh, most commonly the popular language is uh, Python or R and SQL because uh, you, data is most of the time is stored in SQL databases or RDMSs uh, but there are no SQL databases as well but um, you know having a knowledge or skill on a SQL language is very helpful for both dis disciplines data mining is all about dealing with the huge amount of data like a big data like social media platforms and something similar in line uh, having a decent uh, skill set on problem solving uh, data storytelling often to a non-technical audience uh, that's I, I'll say not only these uh, data as a data scientist you need these skills or a data like, but technically in any um, academic or professional discipline that's a really good uh, ability uh, to convey information uh, to non-technical individuals uh, this is uh, one of the last uh, slides comparing uh, three uh, uh, professions being a data scientist, data engineer and uh, data analyst and uh, as you can see you'll be using uh, uh, these uh, knowledge to make predictions and answer key business questions skill set required is math programming and statistics or well, on this side you need programming and big data and cloud and basically you're preparing the data to make it uh, uh, you know kind of uh, in a form which is uh, allow data scientists uh, and analysts to perform their their work and on this particular side of being a data analyst communication and business knowledge is is kind of a but this is the this is uh, not a hard boundary on all these uh, three disciplines uh, as we have seen previously they are primarily all overlapping depending on the organization depending on the task at hand what you do 
what you will be doing uh, you will be doing more uh, of uh, one area compared to the other so this is uh, um, the course outline I have taken from one of the uh, data science program offering of a very known university if you just click on this uh, link you will go to that uh, uh, institute but as you can see here you know, you'll be learning mathematics I think it's a four-year program bachelor's degree program uh, so you'll be a lot of uh, mathematics uh, machine learning um, software engineering image processing uh, uh, kind of data parallelism databases signals and systems information theory so just to show you that how diverse one needs to be in order to be a good data scientist or data or data related uh, professional that's what I can say in short so this is another program which I have uh, taken from one of the university and uh, their focus is uh, uh, but they are finests, uh, their focus is on uh, using data science for uh, physics uh, needs and uh, again a four year program and as you can see here a lot of physics a lot of mathematics but uh, in every year almost you know data science is along with them and when we are talking data science is primarily we are talking uh, mathematics and physics I guess most of the time in this particular program so as we talked before that uh, the, this world is analog okay so how we bring uh, information from analog uh, to the digital world because that's what most of the time now we deal with uh, we work with the digitized data um, uh, it's it's important to have that information so that you can yeah, you can you can keep in uh, this very I'll say important uh, piece of information uh, to become a good data scientist, analyst, or engineer. So the, the analog signals, whatever is out there in the universe, we used uh, basically electronic sensors and associated circuitry. Uh, to make it uh, uh, electrically they will look like this so this is just as a sample showing an analog signal of uh, often just in any arbitrary uh, data I just simply took it uh, from a Google image search so that's when we talk about analog signals uh, electrically that's how the signal look like doesn't need to be always on the positive side it can be totally on the negative side or it will be between positive and negative axis on the y side as an amplitude so this particular signal analog signal we use an analog to digital converter they are basically ICs you know ICs as sensors and ICs as analog to digital converter that's what it converts an analog signal uh, to numbers or you can say digital uh, data which brings that data into the digital world for further processing so that's how we capture or bring the analog data to the digital work and that's the process I you know you will be tested uh, make sure that you understand it and any questions you have please do ask um, because we are not assuming that you have any prior knowledge about any of the keywords or information shared during lectures okay, let's go to the next slide so uh, before going to the next slide so um, in this particular course we'll be only dealing with uh, text and images as told in the beginning so uh, in relation to data science course so these are um, uh, the skill sets uh, these are very uh, nice links I really encourage 
uh, students to to go to those links and and uh, learn about the required skill skill set and the tools uh, for for the data scientist. Uh, this is also a very good uh, TEDx talk. I highly encouraged to go there and uh, and listen to the talk what the uh, that professional uh, has to say about uh, the required skill set. And uh, myself, I did a um, uh, job search on known uh, employment uh, or job portals uh, using the keyword data science. And and these are the kind of uh, skill sets I found in there. But in this particular course, all the magenta color highlighted uh, text will be focusing on uh, heavily, uh, like statistical data analysis. Um, the blue color will, will touch briefly to, get, to give you a kind of a, a taste of uh, these tools, uh, technologies or knowledge. But majority of these, uh, so we'll be using Python, we'll be using Matplotlib within Python, NumPy, Pandas, uh, or you know, we'll be also be uh, working with Spark. Uh, we'll be using Nine and Hardo, uh, and also um, I'm thinking of using Rapid Miner for data science related uh, kind of applications and demos and assignments. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So here are the preliminary course requirements. So you need to have a high school, college, decent knowledge of mathematics, physics, and uh, logic, like in problem solving, using, using a logical approach to that uh, problem. Uh, decent knowledge on using Python and related tools, or as mentioned right in the beginning, we are not assuming that you have any prior knowledge about any of this we are teaching uh, in this particular course other than you know having high school decent knowledge of mathematics and physics and uh, problem solving uh, but it's good that you have a knowledge on Python if not then you at least have an intention to quickly learn in order to be performing good in this particular course These are the books will be following um, uh, in, in particular practical statistics for data scientists. This is the, the main book, but also I'll be taking contents from uh, these four references. But it's highly encouraged uh, and recommended for students to focus on the information shared during lectures on, on the shared slides. Okay. Any questions you have, please uh, ask those questions during the uh, question and uh, Q and A sessions, uh, in order to bring clarity and be able to perform good in this particular course. So in this uh, introductory lecture, uh, we'll be just uh, giving a brief overview of uh, some of the key uh, mathematical and statistical terms we will be uh, kind of uh, frequently using in this particular course. Um, and uh, in, this, in, the, in the next lecture, we will discuss all of uh, these terms again with uh, more greater uh, kind of uh, details with examples. Okay, so let's go through these uh, some of the key terms, uh, and these terms are used primarily of uh, having an estimate of location. Okay, so that's important for for you to realize that we are trying to estimate the location in a given data set. So what what I mean means that uh, you have a set, for example. Um, like, uh, for example, this is your set, okay? These are set of values. So, mean means, um, and we represent this uh, by putting a, a bar on top of a letter. In this case, it's the letter X. You sum all uh, the values in the set, okay? 
and you divide it by the total number of um, values in the set. So for example in this case as you can see there are five values. You sum it all together and divide it by five and that's exactly what you will get 42. So the mean of this set is 42. Um, so that's what uh, the term mean um, very commonly used uh, for ones who are not uh, familiar with this term. It's you know the synonym another word we use for mean is average. So what uh, the weighted mean means it's the sum of all values times the uh, weight divided by the sum of the weights. Maybe it's a kind of a complex definition for you. Uh, at this moment, we will, as I said, like uh, we'll discuss this in detail in our next lecture. But in simple words, for example, um, we have uh, three, four sets like this with the different number of elements in the set. So, like for example, in this set we have five values. Another set we have ten values. A third one we have twenty values, right? And our um, our desire is to find the mean uh, of those three sets. So. One way to do that is to sum all these values and divide by the, the, the total number of um, values in, in each set. So, so for as I said, like 5, let's say plus uh, uh, 10 and 15. So that will be 20 total values. So you, you sum all those 20 values and divide it by uh, 20. So that will give you a weighted mean. But another uh, decent way, uh, uh, which, which we find is, uh, and we call it as a weighted mean, is primarily to, uh, to give a weight to each set. Um, and you can give any weight. For example, um, for the value of five, uh, which is uh, a set with the least number of values, you give it uh, a weight less than the other to higher number of uh, elements in the set. Uh, so you give this a weight of 5, the other you give it a weight of 10, the third one you can give it a weight of uh, and, um, let's say 15. And you, f and you do this weighted mean and uh, it uh, you will see that Finding a mean in, the, in this particular form is going to be very much uh, near the, the value of the weighted mean. And again, uh, we'll go through example in order to explain this particular concept. Median is primarily is the middle value in the data set. Like for example, in this particular data set, very important whenever we talk about any of, uh, like whenever we talk about uh, median uh, we arrange the, the given set in an ascending order ascending order means from least value to the highest value so this set is already arranged like this so the median for this the middle value of this is 45 okay so that's exactly what it means uh, the value such that one half of the data lies above and, and below so as you can see 45 is as, as a median, so one half lies below and the other half lies above. In case of uh, that your set is has even number of uh, elements, in that case the middle two values, you take the average of those two values and that's what your uh, median will be. Okay, It's also called the 50th percentile uh, in the data set. Okay? Uh, the percentile is the value uh, such that the p percent of the data lies below. That's what the definition is. And um, here's the link. Um, uh, it's also called quantile. Here's a very good example. Click on it. Uh, and in your time, just uh, go through this example. We will discuss this example in detail in our next lecture. And uh, uh, so in case of the, again that if you have even numbers um, okay sorry to, there is another you know example here as you can see six is a median here and uh, again when it, when it comes to percentile so these are the, some of the formulas we will be discussing in detail 
uh, this is for the even numbers you know uh, again we will discuss this in detail that how uh, you know to understand uh, these uh, equations in our next lecture so when it comes to weighted mean uh, weighted mean is the value such that one half of the sum of the weights lies above and below the sort of data this is uh, the weighted mean and it's useful as an estimator of central tendency basically robustness against outliers what is an outlier so i have to click everything in order to show you this outlier because the term is right here a data that is very different from most of the data so if you see in this particular graph and uh, these black dots data points you know they are they are basically uh, 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 next to each other in their neighborhoods, uh, they are falling, uh, they are rising or falling in a certain pattern uh, without going too far from this uh, from the central tendency. Okay, uh, whereas these red points, uh, data points, what you see here are very far from the central uh, tendency, so that's uh, these data points we call it call as outliers so it's uh, very important as a data scientist to carefully analyze these outliers uh, before you basically eliminate it from your uh, evaluations okay very important so again this when we did mean is as mentioned is useful in estimating the central tendency and with examples you know like such we will we will discuss this in detail and we'll understand what this particular weighted uh, where the weight comes and how we you know um, estimate it and all these we will discuss in you know next lecture so what is trimmed mean is uh, the average of all values after dropping a fixed number of extreme values again the trimmed mean uh, is primarily the same thing as um, uh, kind of trying to find the central tendency of the data and uh, eliminating, eliminating the outliers okay uh, it's also called a truncated mean and that's how we uh, that's the mathematical equation for the trimmed mean and we will discuss in detail uh, these equations in our next lecture robustness what it means by robust uh, that uh, it's not sensitive to extreme values uh, the synonym for that is resistant uh, an example if you click on here it's a very good example you can go through it but we will discuss that in our next lecture as well that median weighted median median absolute deviation and interquantile range are robust measures of stat statistical dispersion of data okay where mean standard deviation SD for standard deviation or range or not so what it means uh, to have a robust measure of um, uh, in the data uh, we use the terms like median weighted median median absolute deviation and interquantile range uh, and these these uh, terms give us or these equations concepts will give us this kind of a robust measures of the static uh, statistical distribution or dispersion uh, in the data okay there is mean or standard deviation or range does not give us this information and again we will discuss with examples um, and understand why uh, this is this statement is true compared to uh, this statement we already discussed uh, outliers and the, again we know that these are extreme values okay and uh, these are again the two very important terms will be uh, kind of heavily um, uh, mentioning during this particular course one is called variance the other, the other is standard deviations variance is the sum of squared deviation uh, deviations from the mean divided by n minus 1 where n is the total number of data values 
and that's uh, what you see here so as you can see this is your mean and these are the individual values you just uh, struck the subtract the individual values in the data set from the mean squared it sum it all and then divide it by n minus 1 which is the and where n is the total number of uh, data values in the set here in this book um, uh, variance is uh, in this particular post form where I took the snapshot it is represented by s uh, but there are different symbols for variance uh, and we will discuss this uh, in our subsequent lectures as well but anyhow in this case as you can see here variance is represent, represented by s square and there is the equation for the variance and in the next lecture we will go through some uh, multiple examples uh, to calculate the variance of a given data set standard deviation is uh, simply a square root of variance as you can see here so if you take a square root of that that will become an s as you can see here but most commonly standard deviation is represented by the symbol sigma rather than an s so just for clarity let's go to the next slide so here are some of the examples uh, of the weighted mean so very quickly there are two sets uh, one set has uh, 20 stu students and another set has uh, 30 students and our we want to find the mean of these two uh, classes this is the morning class this is the afternoon class so one way is to basically just sum all together and divide it by the total number of uh, students grades that's uh, one way but another way is that we, let's say we assign a value of uh, 20 as a weight to this set 30 as a weight to this set uh, why we are assigning 20 here because this this set has lesser uh, data points compared to this set okay and then again the same th trend will go if let's say if we have 10 sets so we will assign a lesser uh, weight to a set with the least amount of data values okay so anyhow just stick with example so you just do 20 multiplied by the average of this particular uh, data set which is 80 plus 30 multiplied by the average of this data set which is 90 and then you divide it by the sum of the weights 20 plus 30 and you will get 86 and as you can see here they are pretty pretty much exactly equal but uh, what I want you to do is primarily uh, pick a different weight let's say you try a weight of 5 here and a weight of 10 here and see what value you will get so this is again part of your assignment and uh, to be due within two weeks is to find a table of um, in this particular example the, uh, a table of 10 different weights you you pick the weight you want and show that uh, in your results that what you get so this is the percent percentile is uh, the two examples shown for the percentile the scores obtained by 10 students is uh, are given so what is the 70th uh, what percentile is seven, uh, 70 score so this is what we're trying to find so the first thing that you need to do is again to sort the uh, the data you have in the ascending order from least to the highest and here's your uh, 70th uh, score of a student so you first see that how many data points you have below that value so below that value you have six uh, data points so what you simply do to get the percentile of this 70 is to the number of values below 70 divided by the total number of values multiplied by 100 so again 6 divided by total values are 10 multiplied by 100 so 100 so this will give you a 60 percentile for the value 70 so as an example uh, uh, 
uh, you, you, you must be very clear but uh, this is again part of your assignment to calculate the percentile for each value of this uh, these data points okay so calculate the percentile for 38 47 all the way to 92 and then show it as show your results similarly you will do the same for example too um, uh, in your assignment submission so again these are the weights of 10 people recorded as uh, 35 41 all the way to 77 so how to find the percentile so there are uh, how many people are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 again 10 students to find the percentile of uh, 58 again how many people below 58 or 4 so 4 divided by 10 and uh, multiplied by 100 will give you for 40 percent for 40 percent so the weight uh, 58 has a 40 percentile in this particular example but in your assignment submissions you will be calculating the percentile for each uh, data point in this particular set. So what is trimmed mean? Uh, trimmed mean is uh, means basically we are, we, are, we are trying to eliminate the outliers biases in the data set. Okay. So here's uh, there are five values we have and the mean of that is 8.28 and if you want uh, the trimmed mean of a uh, total 40% so for the 40 percent of uh, five data point is basically two so you will half it to remove the half of the points from the lower range from the from the lower side and half from the higher side so in this case you will remove one value from the from the starting with the least and one value uh, starting from the from the highest point so so we'll be removing 6 and 9.9 .9. so exactly 20 percent uh, the lowest 20 percent we will remove and the highest 20 percent values we will, we will remove and for for the data set of 5 20 percent you will see that is simply one value we will be removing that's exactly what we have done and then we find the trimmed mean it will give us 8.5 so basically um, an improvement of 0.22 points in finding the central tendency or the mean uh, in, in the given data set. Okay, so that's what it means by it. the trained means is basically eliminating the outlier bias in finding the mean. So this we, we have already discussed so mean, median, and mode, and as you can see here. Uh, this is basically is for seven values this is the mean uh, this is the median three is the median and mode is uh, mode is the most commonly occurring value in the data set in this case it's the value 2 which is repeating quite often in the data set okay as a graphical representation um, uh, this is how we this function has nothing to do with this data set this is just and simply an any arbitrary uh, probability density function so let's uh, just just show you graphically that how we represent mean is is basically the central uh, tendency and the median is basically exactly the central point and the mode is the most commonly occurring uh, value in the data set and the commonly at the highest point in a probability and distribution function probability distant density function so that's how we represent these three important parameters in the data graphically let's go to the next slide again um, uh, as we seen before graphical representation if the mean median and mode are all at the same location such a distribution is called symmetrical distribution that's exactly what you see here and if 
and the peak or uh, and the mode uh, the mode of the function is uh, leaning towards left uh, that such a uh, distribution of, of the function we, we call it as uh, has a positive skew okay so the mode is leaning left towards the median but if the mode is leaning right towards the median comparing to the median then we call it as as a negative skew again very important terms but the most important thing uh, uh, I'm trying to convey uh, on through these graphs is that the judgment on the symmetry of a given distribution by using only its skewness is risky very risky the distribution shape must be taken into account so it means you simply just not um, based on the value you get uh, that uh, what uh, kind of a symmetry is there, there in the data uh, you have to look into its shape uh, as well before estimating uh, estimating uh, right um, uh, or right analysis of the data set at hand So that's another example of uh, uh, again two uh, uh, log uh, log normal distribution with uh, different uh, standard deviations. So this dotted function has a standard deviation of one, and this solid uh, function has a standard deviation of 0.25. So as you can see here. Uh, the mode is right here the median for this function is the green uh, point which is right here and the mean is on the on the right uh, of the median so what this two function is uh, trying to show you is that they both have as you can see here they are overlapping so they have the same median and mean so these two functions have the same median and mean but a different mode again trying to emphasize this particular concept that it's risky that uh, to judge um, only based on skewness, uh, skewness that uh, how the distribution is uh, looks like. So it's very important to look into the shape of the distribution. Just another example. If you click on this picture or any of these pictures, it will take you to the respective source where you, where you can read more about. And we will discuss in our lectures in detail on all of these discussed concepts so um, here we talk about log normal distribution so that's how a log normal distribution look like we will discuss more um, in detail uh, but here you know the sigma and mu are two parameters uh, so what uh, I have for you is is an assignment uh, as I given uh, the assignments uh, tasks before to be due within two weeks as another uh, part of the assignment is that you have to uh, write a Python program uh, to replicate these graphs okay again as I mentioned these slides will be shared with you Did you just click on these uh, uh, pictures it will take you to the respective web page you will find the formulas required in order for you to uh, get a starting point and use Python in order to produce these 
uh, graphs okay and it is showing us the not exactly not necessarily has to be exact but again you need to show uh, in this case positive skew and I'll also show the negative skew try to get this uh, median and mean uh, to be at the same point if you can get that's fine but the most important thing that I am interested in that is that you'll be able to uh, generate graphs like this using Python okay so let's go to the next slide so these are the refer references uh, please uh, follow and uh, uh, very useful resources uh, which I'll which I'm also using along with uh, the spe uh, specified box uh, uh, to prepare these lectures and these are some of the references to uh, very quality online courses on data science and related topics uh, highly encouraged anyone interested uh, you know to visit their links as I mentioned along with the books I also follow myself uh, these re very quality resources in order to bring the content uh, in this particular course okay so thank you and we'll see you in the next lecture take care